All right, guys. Well, welcome back. We have today for you the Philadelphia Athletics at the St. Louis Browns. This is June 12th, 1949. And so the 1949 replay continues. A couple of things I want to show you here first before we start. First off, we're going to take a quick look here at the standings. So when we look at the standings here in the replay, the American League, you can see the Athletics are three games behind. They've lost one, and they're starting to fall uh, compared to uh, Cleveland. Now, if there's any sort of team to root for, I don't know if it's taboo for you or not to root for a team in your replay, you've got to root for the Athletics here. I mean, you really do. They're up against you know the Red Sox, the Yankees, the Indians, the big teams of 1949, um, and they're trying to hold their own, but they're starting to to slip a little bit. Um, another thing I wanted to show you as well for the sake of comparison is a uh, clipping from the newspaper. The uh, This is the Philadelphia um, uh, Inquirer from uh, this day. This is from June 12, 1949. These are just the standings. The uh, Athletics at Browns game the night before was postponed due to uh, rain, I believe. The Athletics at that time were in third place, but six games behind the Yankees. And so as we go back here to um, our game, uh, we can see that the Athletics and the replay are doing a little bit better than they were doing in real live. And uh, we will now get this underway. And uh, here we do have the 30 and 23 Athletics um, with uh, uh, Eddie Juiced up there at the plate. Now, interesting little bit of uh, information for you as Ned uh, Garver throws a strike over to Juiced. Uh, Garver is not exactly your first choice for the uh, Browns in this start. He's pitching, I believe, on uh, three days rest. I'll show it to you here. So we go look at the pitchers, and all of them have been working, and all of them have been working kind of hard. And so when we look at Garver here, he last pitched on the 8th, is now the 12th. Only one, two, three days of rest, and he threw 103 pitches. So we'll see if this has an impact in this game or not. Um, it's funny because the Athletics actually have fewer pitchers available than the Browns, but uh, the Browns have uh, seen their bullpen depleted, and there's another strike to juice, 0-2. Part of that is because of the computer manager and what it does, and there's strike three called to Eddie Juice. That's a rare sight, seeing Juice strike out, one away. Here comes Don White. White takes a strike. I did a little bit of finagling with the Athletics lineup, trying to bring it back to real life, and they did play White um, against uh, lefties around, or I'm sorry, against righties around this time. There's a swing and a miss, it's 0-2. Against lefties is actually correct. Anyway, it's all right. That's taken low and away, 2-2 two and two now to count. I'll let the computer worry about that. There's a fly ball to right field. Cocos has it. There's two away, and here comes Fane. And there's a ball high to Ferris, 1-0, and, and that's low for a changeup, 2-0. Strike in the outside corner, it's 2-1. And, and that's inside, 3-1 and one the count, and that's outside again. So Fane uh, takes a walk down to first base, and that'll bring up Sam Chapman, who's now hitting um, in the cleanup spot. Chapman has a eight home runs so far. 261 is his average, and he takes a ball up and in. And that's line to the gap and ride, and that's going to be between Severs and Cocos. Around comes Fane trying to score. We're going to throw home. And Moss gets the ball, but not quite in time. Fane has scored in underneath him, and it's one nothing Philadelphia already. And that'll bring up Hank Majeski. So uh, the Athletics are showing why they belong. There is a strike to Majeski. The Athletics in 49 were good at slugging. They were good at getting on base, and they were good at fielding. You got to wonder how this team finished fourth. There's another ball to Majeski, one and one, and the foul ball for a strike, one and two. Bounced off of Moss, it remains one and two, and there's a curve high, two and two the count. Ground ball over to third, uh, actually to uh, short as Anderson fields that one, and he throws to first for the out. We go now to the bottom of the first inning, and uh, there, it's a one nothing lead for the Athletics. Here comes Andy Anderson, who I haven't played much, and uh, he, st he started hitting leadoff a little bit for the Browns and then didn't last long. He ended up going down to eighth. With the St. Louis Browns in 49, you can do whatever you want. I mean, there was no consistency here in the lineup. One and one the count now on Andy. And there's a ground ball up the middle. Fox has that. Nelly throws to first, one away. Lou Brissy, by the way, 4.25 ERA and a 3-5 and five record. Um, and uh, this is belted by Dillinger to the gap and right, but uh, Chapman's fast enough to uh, race that down. Two outs, and it's been pretty quick. Here comes uh, Jerry Pretty. Pretty's hitting 323, and there's a strike to him first pitch, 0-1, and, and this is hit to center. Chapman's got that for the out, and with that, we go now to the top of the second inning. It'll be Elmer Vallo here to lead things off uh, for the uh, Athletics. Now, I did have uh, Vallo hitting second. Um, we'll see how this works with somebody else hitting second, but we may go back to this. Vallo loves to get on base. He's walked 49 times. 
And there's a little comebacker back to Ned Garver, who throws to first. Easy peasy, one away. And here comes Nellie Fox, who takes the ball high. I was about to talk about him. Fox wasn't really starting for the Athletics at this point in time in real life, but he's been playing so well for them in the replay, we're going to start him a little bit more. 2-0, now 2-1 and one as that's fouled away. And there's a pop-up over to right field. Actually, pretty, the second baseman will get that for the out. And there's two away. Here comes Joe Astroth. There's a strike to Joe, 0 oh and 1, and that's a ground ball off of the glove of Dillinger on the left side and into left field for a base hit. And so Philadelphia threatening again, but with two outs. Here comes Lou Brissy. He's hitting 346 and uh, takes a strike. He has a six game hitting streak. When was the last time you heard of that from a pitcher? 0 oh and 2 the count. That's high and inside, 1 and 2. Popped up, and uh, it'll be. Uh, Pretty, um, I'm sorry, Platt making the catch for the out, the left fielder, and uh, that'll do it. We uh, go now to the bottom of the second inning, still one nothing Philadelphia. Here now, Jack Graham hitting 245. He takes a ball high and ball inside 2 and 0. That's way outside 3 and 0. And there's a strike 3 and 1 the count, and another fastball for a strike. It's a full count on Graham, and he takes that up and in for the walk. One of the problems that Philadelphia has is their propensity to give up walks, and that's just what we saw there. Brissy giving up his first walk today, and that brings up Dick Cocos. Cocos not much of a bunter, so we'll swing away. And he takes a fastball high. Ground ball to short, juiced, Fox, and Fain. And that's what the Philadelphia Athletics are so well known for. They set the record in 1949, a record that still stands to this day, by the way, for a number of double plays turned defensively. Two away, and here's Whitey Platt. There's a strike to Waddy. Funny thing about that record is that you're not going to find it in most of the record books. 0-2 oh, the count on Platt. The reason why? We hate team defense. 1-2 and two now the count on Whitey. I'm not sure if it's an American thing or what as Platt hits a fly ball to center. Chapman runs that down and that'll do it. We go now to the top of the third and it's still one nothing Philadelphia. It may just be an American thing to focus on individualism. We like to look at the individual player as uh, Juice takes a strike and not on the team effort. But double plays are a team effort. Ground ball into the hole. Uh, Graham has that one, and nobody's at first to cover, and Juice gets the base hit. He works that one out, and that'll bring up Don White again. I do think, as I'm looking at this, that we may put Valo up hitting second, and it was a mistake on my part. I put in the left-handed lineup instead of the right-handed. The only difference is the guy who's hitting second, so it doesn't really matter that much. Um, so uh, Juice is on second. White will square, and he takes a ball high. That's why he's there, and then he bunts this one foul, one and one Slider in the dirt, 2-1. and one. And that's low, 3-1, and one, and Garver's going to walk him. Pop foul. It's a full count now on Don. Full count remains. And swinging a miss down he goes. White, not a good hitter against righties, and so this was my problem. One away, here's Ferris Fain, and he takes the strike. There is a slider low, 1-1. One one. Pop up left side, and it'll be Dillinger, the second, uh, the third baseman, apologies, making the catch for the out. Two away, and here comes Sam Chapman. There's a ball inside, 1-0 and on Sam. Dribbler in front of the plate, Moss jumps on that one, but has no play anywhere. That's going to be an infield single, I believe. And no, I'm sorry, it's an error. They're going to give an error on Moss. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit harsh, I think, but uh, so it is. That brings up Hank Majeski. Now, runners on at first and second, and uh, two outs uh, for the Athletics. Now, remember, they scored their one run with two outs in the top of the first, and there's a strike to Hank. It's fouled away. It's 0-2 now. Majeski hitting 277, and uh, he hits a ground ball over into the hole. It's pretty stopping that one. It bounces back up to him, and he throws to first just in time for the out. So it's always an adventure in St. Louis. We go to the bottom of the third inning. It's still 1-0 uh, Philadelphia. Here comes Roy Seavers. The Browns, by the way, if you remember at the uh, start of the show, the Browns uh, in real life at this time were dead last. I think that they're also last place in our replay, so uh, some things don't really change. And there's a ground ball over to Fain at first, and that goes right between his legs. That's an obvious error, and that's a good call that time. So Severs reaches first on the air. That'll bring up Les Moss, and they're going to bunt him to stay away from the double play. Bunt it back to in front, and uh, Brissy has it and goes over to Fox covering at first base. Severs moves to second, and uh, with one out, here's Ned Garver. There's a ball outside, 1-0, uh, and oh, and that's dribbled foul. 1-1 one one the count on Ned. There's ball two. It's 2-1. Two and one. Pop up, and it'll be Astrith, the catcher, making the catch for the out. Two away, and here is Andy Anderson again. There's a strike to Anderson. He's hitting 167, but he hasn't hit much. One and one the count. That's popped over. It's going to be a pop-up to the right side, and that will be easily caught there by the first baseman, Fain. And so now we go to the top of the fourth inning. 
And it remains a one nothing lead for Philadelphia. Here comes Elmer Vallo. Vallo, and I think the first thing I'm going to do after this game is I'm going to go change those lineups. We'll have Vallo hit second again. 1-1 one one the count, and that's ripped to right center field, and he's got a double. That's the reason why. I know that uh, real-life managers love bunting in that number two spot, but Vallo's a good hitter. I mean, it would be like taking, uh, you know, Vern Stevens uh, on the Red Sox as uh, Fox hits a ground ball to Anderson, throws to first, there's one away. It would be like taking Vern Stevens and hitting him fifth so you could have some guy bunt uh, hitting second. In fact, I'm not sure what happened with the Red Sox lineup. I may have to look at that as well. There is a pitch wide to Astroth, 1-0. 2-0 and and now as that misses. And this is crushed, foul 2-1. and one. And swing and a miss at that sinker, 2-2. Two and two. And that's just low, full count now on Astroth. Foul to the right. Foul the way. It's still a full count on Joe, and that's a ground ball up the middle. That'll be a base hit, and Astroth picks up the RBI, his second hit of the ball game, and it is a 2-0 lead now for the Athletics. Up now is Lou Brissy. Uh, Brissy, as we said, hitting 333. He's a hit in uh, six straight, and there's a strike to Lou, 0-1. And, and that's bunted but foul, 0-2. And, and he bunts again. It bunts to the left side, catches everyone by surprise. Dillinger fields it, throws over to Pretty, covering at the bag, and Astroth moves into scoring position. So with two outs, here's Eddie Juiced. Juiced is one for two, and he takes a strike, hitting only 251, but he's got that crazy on-base percentage. He's walked 61 times. One and one is the count. Swing and a miss, it's one and two now. And there's strike three called, and Juiced uh, ends up walking back to the dugout with uh, the uh, bat on his shoulder. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning, and it's a 2-0 lead now for the Athletics. Here's Bob Dillinger. Curveball way wide, 1-0. Brissy not with the good pitch. There's a little ground ball to Majeski on to first, one away. Jerry Pretty comes up and lines this down the left field line, but just foul, 0-1. And, and there's a ball, 1-1. Curveball that's hit back to Brissy, and he throws back to first, two away. Here comes Jack Graham. There's a strike to Graham, 0-1. There's a ball off the plate. And that's low, 2-1. and one. High, 3-1 and one the count on Jack, and that is high again. So Brissy has walked his second. Brings up Dick Cocos, but with two out. And that's fouled away, 0-1. Oh Ground ball, second base, and uh, Fox, and his throw to first is late. And that breaks the magic spell. First hit of the ball game for the Browns, and that'll bring up Whitey Platt with runners on at first and second, and with uh, two men out. Here comes Platt, and he takes a ball high. Brissy's only thrown now 44 pitches, as it's now 1-1 one and one on Whitey. 44 pitches is all, which shows you how eager the Browns have been. And uh, Platt hits this one over to center field. That's going to land in front of Chapman. We're going to try to send these runners, but Graham is slow. There goes the throw home. Platt will try to uh, divert the throw to second, but he doesn't, and the throw is in time, and the slow runner, Graham, is thrown out at the plate. So good uh, piece of uh, throwing there by the Athletics, and that does it. We go to the top of the fifth inning. It's still 2 nothing Philadelphia. And uh, they're a little bit, uh, probably a little bit too aggressive on my part, I suppose. That's something that we can talk about later. Here's a uh, ball outside to Don White, and in one, another ball inside, 2 and 0 is the count on him. Round ball to third, Dillinger throws to first, one away. And this is where you have the problem with hitting this guy second. He can bunt, but there's no one on. 0 for 3 is White. Here's Ferris Fane, who takes the ball. Ground ball to the left side, Anderson over to first, easy for him, two away, and up comes Sam Chapman. Chapman takes the ball. I noticed that Anderson has only a fair rating there um, at uh, shortstop. I think that's his range. And uh, this one was hit into the left field corner by Chapman for an easy double. So the Athletics with yet another piece of power hitting, and up comes Hank Majeski. Two outs, runner on at second, and Majeski takes a strike. And there's a ball inside, one and one the count on Hank. Swing and a miss, it's one and two. And there's a swing and a miss of that one off the plate. Um, and they're going to have to tag Majeski, but he's out anyway. We go now to the bottom of the fifth inning. It is a 2-0 lead still for the Athletics. Up comes Roy Seavers. That's fouled away to the screen, 0-1. Fly ball shallow right center. It'll be the right fielder White, one away. Les Moss takes the ball high, breaking ball. And takes another ball just outside. 2-0 pitch is hit over to right, and White has that. And there's two away up now Ned Garver. Round ball to third. Majeski has it, drops it, picks it up, throws to first, and still gets him. And that doesn't bode well for the uh, Brownies, hate to tell you that. Uh, we go now to the top of the sixth inning. 
you know, when I make these games, I kind of keep track of uh, the uh, time uh, for the timestamps and stuff like that. And when I'm looking over this here on the other monitor on the side, I keep noticing that these uh, Browns innings are very, very quick, and the Athletics seem to be up all day long. Here's Elmer Valo who takes a ball, 1-0. and He's 1-2, for two, and that's fouled away. 1-1 one and one the count. There's a good curve in there, 1-2 and two now in Elmer, and that's fouled away. Still 1-2. and two. That's hit inside the bag, first base line, and that's going to be a double into the corner for Vallow. And so now he's two for three, and here comes Nellie Fox. Fox is hitting 287. He's outdoing his pace in real life. Fox in 49 was only 21 years old, and it's probably a little bit too much to ask him to be the regular second baseman, but he's been playing so well. We want to keep him in there for the athletics, and there's a bunt attempt by Fox, and it's over to the right side. Graham fields it, has to flip over to Pretty behind him, and Vallow moves over to third. So with one away, here's Joe Astroth. The Browns will play the infield back, and there's a strike on Astroth 0-1. Brown ball to short, and uh, we're going to throw first. Anderson throws to first, and Vallow will score. He's fast, and so it's a 3-0 lead now for Philadelphia. Two outs, and here's Lou Brissy. Strike in there to Brissy, 0-1. And, and that's jammed him but fouled, 0-2. 1-2, and and is that just missed the outside corner? Fouled back again. And that's fouled away again. Garver is closing in on 100 pitches. There's a ball outside, 2-2. Two and two. Fouled to the left, 2-2 two and two it still is. And that's fouled away again. Popped up, and it's going to be Graham catching that one, the first baseman, for the out. And so that takes us now to the bottom of the sixth inning. And it will be Andy Anderson uh, coming up here for the Browns. St. Louis with only two hits. And there's a ball to Anderson. And another ball, 2-0, and oh, quickly. Ball three is high and away. And that's popped up. Right field. White slides in behind Fox and makes the catch. One away. Here's Bob Dillinger. It's popped up and out of play. 0-1 oh, and one on Bob. And that misses outside. Liner just foul. It's 1-2 and two on Dillinger. Fouled away. Low, 2-2, two and two. and that was up around the letters, and Dillinger couldn't catch up with that, so there's two away, and here comes Jerry Pretty, another dangerous hitter, and he takes a fastball low. Chops this to the right side, and uh, Fane grabs that. Brissy missed it, and uh, because Brissy went for it, he wasn't at first base, so an easy base hit there for Pretty, his uh, first of the game, third of the game for the Browns, and that'll bring up Jack Graham. Graham has walked twice. He's been um, the only real two errors here that uh, Brissy's made pitching. He takes a ball and then a strike, one and one. Popped up to the left side. Majeski can't get there. It's one and two. In there for strike three, and uh, they call that strike three. That looked like it was a little bit inside when we say in there. We go to the top of the seventh inning now. It's a uh, three nothing lead for Philadelphia. They're in the driver's seat. Here comes Eddie Juiced. The ball low and outside to Eddie and a strike, one and one. There is a ball again, two and one the count. Curve high and inside, 3-1 and one in Eddie, and there's the strike, full count. Bouncer, pretty, to first, one away. Here comes Don White. Little looper over to center field. Seavers coming in on that one, and he makes a sliding catch for the out. Good play by Seavers, two away, and here comes Fane. He hammers that one up through the middle. Pretty can't get there in time, so Fane rewards the Browns for their good defense with the single up the middle. Here comes Sam Chapman. Two for three is Chapman. He takes the ball, hitting 266, and there's a bouncer over the mound for another hit. He's three for four. Little single. Fane has to stop at second. Two away still, and here comes Hank Majeski. The Athletics have done a lot of this damage with two men out, and Garver's getting up there in pitches, and I think that's where the problem lies. It's hit to the gap and left, but uh, Platt is there. The left fielder makes the catch for the out, and uh, that one dies quickly. We go now to the bottom of the seventh inning. It remains a 3-0 game. Brissy's only thrown 67 pitches. Here comes Dick Kokos, and he swings and misses and takes another strike, 0-2. Round ball first base, and uh, it's a, a good play by Fane. Flips that one over to Brissy uh, for the out. One away. Up is Whitey Platt. Fly ball to right, White makes the catch, two away, and up comes Roy Seavers. Strike to Seavers, and fouled away, it's 0-2. High, 1-2 the count. High again, 2-2. Two two. Just outside, so it's a full count now on Seavers, and there's a ground ball over to Majeski. the third baseman throws the first for the out. Told you it was fast. We go to the top of the eighth inning, and um, it's a 3-0 uh, lead for Philadelphia. Here comes El Mervalo. The Athletics keep playing like this. They're going to be in the hunt uh, come the end of the season. 2-0 the count on Vallow. 
That's a strike, two and one. And I tell you, there's ball three to follow. The uh, 48 and 49 Athletics had a bunch of good young players, and if you go back through the Sporting News, you'll see them talk about this. It's a full count now on Elmer. Elm, on Elmer. Not Elmo, on Elmer. Um, they had a good uh, group of young players, and there was talk about maybe Connie Mack doing his magic yet again in Philadelphia, and then, of course, he retired in 1950. There's Bob Ford of Allo, and there's not really that much of a coincidence that only a few short years afterwards, the Athletics were in Kansas City. Meanwhile, the Phillies, um, at least in the replay, are flirting with last place in the National League. Um, so, I mean, how thing, different things could have been. There's a ball high to Fox. You think about the Athletics having to leave Oakland or whatever is going to happen there this time around. It goes all the way back to Philadelphia, and it's uh, what happens when Connie Mack stepped away. One and one the count on Nelly. That's fouled away. It's one and two. Snake bitten franchise, and uh, there's a uh, blooper over there to right field. Coco's pretty, and neither can get to it. That's a single for Fox. Valo goes all the way to third, and that'll bring up Joe Astroth. If uh, Garver gives up another run, we're going to have to take him out. There's a ball wide to Astroth, and there's a ball low, 2 and 0. Oh. This inside, 3 and 0. Oh. There's the strike, 3 and 1 the count. Sinker of the knees, it's a full count. That's just fouled away by Astroth. Hit over to right. Kokos has that for the out. Valo is uh, going for home. And uh, that's a bad throw by Kokos. Fox ends up taking second, and it's a 4 nothing lead. I do think that we really need to take uh, Garver out. I know he's due up the next inning. Yeah, we're going to make the change now. We're going to make this change now. It's going to be Ray Shore is going to come into pitch. We'll have him hit 7th. And uh, let's put Stan Spence in there, I think, um, have him uh, play center field. As you can see here, if you're watching, um, and I know that not all of you are watching, the uh, Browns have not much of a bench left, and that's one of the things we have to keep in mind. Here comes uh, Ray Shore, and he has a 3.55 ERA. Take, throws a ball to Brissy. It's 1-0. 1-0 is his record with the save. Of course, he's not going to get a save here. Foul the way. It's 1-2. and two. And uh, he checked his swing, but he didn't check it. And he's uh, rung up two away. And here comes Eddie Juice. 4 nothing. Athletics has been all Philadelphia. And there's a strike to Juice. Ground ball by the mound. Second base. Shortstop Anderson on to first. And that'll do it. And so we go now to the bottom of the eighth inning. And uh, it's going to be Les Moss here leading this off for the Browns. There's a ball low and inside. 1-0 and on Moss. Strike in at the knees, one and one, and that's way off the plate, two and one. Low and outside, three and one the count on Moss, and there's ball four. And so uh, the, something might be happening for the Browns that'll bring up Stan Spence. Spence a good bunter, but uh, it's not going to help us. There's a ball low to Spence. Hit to right center field, White on the move, on the move, and makes a jumping catch on that one. Tremendous play by White, and there's one away. That saved a base hit. Here comes Andy Anderson. And it's hit over to center, and Chapman has it right away. Two away, and here's Bob Dillinger. There's a strike to Bob. And that's a ground ball to Fox, and he's thrown out easily at uh, first. And so nothing happens there for the Browns. We're going now to the top of the ninth inning, and uh, let's see what happens here at the end of this. The uh, Athletics with a 4 nothing lead, and there's a strike to Don White. And a ball high. White um, is not going to be hitting a second for long. He hits a line drive to center, but Spence is there. One away. Ferris Fane comes up. One for three is Fane. He takes the ball high. That's fouled away. One and one. Only two home runs for a man hitting third. Two and one the count. That's in the dirt. It's three and one. Hit to right. Kokos has it. Two away. Up is Chapman. And he takes the ball inside. One and oh on Sam. That's off the plate. Two and oh. And there's a strike. Two and one. Popped up but out of play. Two and two on Sam. Checked his swing. Just got a piece of it. Fouled away again. Chapman, by the way, three for four today. And swings and misses at that one. So he'll be three for five. And that takes us here now to the bottom of the ninth inning. Jerry Pretty will lead this off. And he takes a strike in there. Fastball. Ground ball. Third baseman. Jeske on to first. One away. Here's Jack Graham. And he foul tips that one into Astro's glove. And then takes the ball high and tight. Curve is just high, two and one. Pop up out of play, two and two. And there's another pitch in there for called strike three. So two away, and that'll bring up Dick Kokos, and this is it. There's a strike to Kokos. 
A line shot over to Juiced. What a play by the shortstop, and he throws the first in time for the out. And so that does it. The Athletics with a 4-0 win, 10 hits for Philadelphia, only 3 for the Browns. Lou Brissy didn't even get to 100 pitches. That's how you do it when you don't have so many pitchers. The Athletics uh, showing that they do belong um, in the uh, conversation in the American League, and uh, this puts a lot of pressure on the Yankees who are dripping out of it. So uh, the Athletics with a big win here in St. Louis, 4-0 the final score. Hope you enjoyed that one, and we will have more tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.